hello. So I'm here with Amy. Hello, Amy. Hi, how's it going? I'm good. So, Amy, you've, you've studied paleontology. Yes. So here at um, Flinders University, where we are. So I want to start with by asking you, what, what got you to, to be here uh, studying paleontology, you know, fossils and life and prehistoric stuff? Um, well, my journey here is probably not quite uh, the typical one, as you might hear a lot of other paleontologists say. So so you weren't the kid that was like, oh, dinosaurs, dinosaurs! No. You weren't. No, not really. All right, I'm out. Nope. No, so, <laughs> so, so what was it? That, how, how did you... Was there a moment? Was there... What um, was it? Sort of. So, I mean, I, I did like dinosaurs as a kid, but... Oh, well, that's alright. Dinosaurs are very cool. So we know. definitely walk She's through my walking with dinosaurs VHS, Good. you know. Well, that's all right. You're redeemed. <laughs> so, so yeah. What, what? But was it that got you here? Um, I was really into. Uh, I was much more into nature, like uh, alive nature. Like I could tell you, instead of being able to tell you the name of every dinosaur, I'd be able to tell you the name of every frog or bird. Um, and I. Spent a lot of time uh, on my grandma's farm, sort of up in the mid-north of South Australia when I was um, very young. And what really got me into paleontology was um, coming to university to study environment, ecology, things like that. Um, hearing uh, uh, Gavin Prado, uh, one of the paleontologists yep. here, give a lecture about the megafauna of Australia and where they were and what they were. And um, what really caught me was that um, these animals were being dug up, you know, 10 minutes down the road from, from where, where I grew up. grew up. Okay. Yeah. So, so you had that, that context of the love of nature. And, and it's a very important thing. One of the things we talk about at Dinosaur University is in becoming a paleontologist, it's really important to understand alive animals because that mm. helps you yeah, to yeah. interpret and understand when you're looking at the fossilized bones so you've gone to this and, and this is and while you say yours is not a, a the traditional journey it's not an uncommon journey where you've you've had this background knowledge you've started a thing you've seen a particular yeah. lecturer and you've gone that yeah yeah and it was like that yeah it was it almost much. like a flashing light bulb moment that yeah. you've gone this 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 has now made sense of all of the things. Yeah, and um, I sort of didn't really act on that interest because I was quite uh, nervous and introverted when I first came to university. Um, in my family, my mum and I are the only people who've been to uni, um, and I wasn't really sure what to do <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I didn't really branch out as much as I could have. Um, basically until I got to my third year and I did an elective topic, which was the vertebrate paleontology topic. At the time, it was the only paleontology topic that we offered here. We now have a, now there's a whole degree. Yeah, we now have yeah. a whole degree, which is really exciting. Um, but at the time, it was the only topic. And I took that and I met all of the paleontologists here. And that's when I... And, and we went out on a, um, a few uh, digs with the paleontology society after that. And that's when I really after meeting the other paleos and sharing, getting to like share that passion with them and stuff, it was just like, this is where I belong. And yeah, yeah. And, and I guess it's that thing, that, that feeling that actually I, I do belong here. Yeah, absolutely. Because all of the other bits and pieces, I never really, even though I'm really interested in them, I, it never really clicked in the same way. Um, yeah, and, and that often happens. So that's really cool. So, so fast forward to now. Mm -hmm. So are you an active paleontologist or... or has 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 your path career path kind of taken a different pathway what 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 what's your job now um well a little bit of both um so at the moment i'm a phd student um so i finished my oh in paleontology i yes. should mention <laughs> um so <Yeah. laughs> um i finished my honors uh where i studied uh really really old koalas uh, so oligocene, or oligomycene koalas. Okay, so how long ago is that? For... So, oh, for, yep, that's yep. Uh, about 25, 20,000 years ago. Million, sorry, million. About million 20, years 25 ago. million years ago. Okay, oh, yeah. so so is that kind of like Invicta koala stuff, I think? Um, I think that's a bit 
There's a Professor Flint song about that. There is a that. Professor Flint song about that. That Which one's a bit younger. A bit young, yes. I don't reckon, yeah. yeah, I reckon it's just a little bit, yes. Yeah. Good. But, so, ko- um, so we had koala-ish. Yes. Um, I can't talk about it too much yet. Okay, because <laughs> you have to wait until the PhD <laughs> comes out. That's right. Okay, so, um, yes. But then I got a, um, I had a bit of a break, um, worked as a earth scientist uh, for a little while, um, and then I... And I sort of lost that feeling that I that I clicked a little bit. I think I yeah. yeah I don't again, know. which is not uncommon. Sometimes no. you you I suppose you get you can get a bit tired. Yeah, I definitely felt a bit overworked. Um, tried to do a little bit too much at once. Yeah, and and um, it's totally okay for yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And so you so you sort of had a bit of a break. Had and... a bit of a break, um, and then we went to a conference uh, SVP, which is a vertebrate paleontology conference. Uh, at the end of last year, I met all of these really cool paleontologists. and I was there. Professor Flint was there. I was singing some tunes. That's right. <laughs> that was very good. Um, and got to see all the diversity of research that was happening around the world and really sparked that interest back up to and me. And so again. that was... That was seeing i guess another group yeah that's with right your kin and reminding you yeah that you you belong here yeah you belong yeah. in this place and like giving me giving me a bit of perspective because it can be um i mean i guess we're all very close-knit here at flinders and um it can be a bit that can be really good and it can be really daunting as well like um yeah not not in a bad way just trying to find my own place in the world yeah absolutely yeah. And, and and that that's something that what whatever career you have yeah you know, you're going to be going through that i'll just make oh yes no it's, i did turn it on good <laughs> you know that thing every now and then you do, I turn the camera on because this is a really cool chat and i don't want to have to do this all again because amy will get really quiet so okay so um you, you talked a bit about um uh, a group and belonging and stuff and one of the reasons we're doing these interviews i'm doing these interviews is because I'm speaking to a significant bunch of friends of mine who are mm. women in paleontology, mostly South Australia, because that's where I am, but some others from around Australia and the world, because we're coming up to the 221st birthday of Mary Anning. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to ask you um, about Mary Anning um, mm-hmm. in, in a broad sense. What, what does she mean to you? Is she somebody who was a hero, or have you learnt about her later, or what? Where do, where do you see her set? What what's, yeah. Um, I definitely didn't learn much about her um until maybe only a few years ago, within the, within the last sort of four to five years, I guess. Um, it's not anyone I ever knew existed as a kid, apart from the obvious, you know, tongue twister. She sells seashells. Yes. Yes. Um. But. I mean, that exemplifies, I guess, like, uh, how do I put it? I guess the, the problem, <laughs> like, for yeah. lack of a better term. Why, why, why didn't why you didn't know? know? Why didn't you know? Yeah. Because you would have known of Isaac Newton. You would have known absolutely. Charles Darwin, and quite rightly. Yes, absolutely. You know, Galileo, you would have known Copernicus, yes. Mm, mm. But why didn't you know? That's right. You know, and, and, I, and go I on. Oh, sorry. No, I just don't, I don't think I really knew. I mean, apart from... I mean, maybe like Jane Goodall. Other than that, I just I probably wouldn't have been able to name any female scientists until yeah. I sort of made a deliberate effort to look into it as well, and to look into the contributions that they've made, um, and how they've helped progress society. Yeah, pretty much under the radar with and, no and, recognition. And you suddenly see this extraordinary woman. Yeah. Who I'm sorry, you can't belong to the Geological Society. You can't do this. And she kept on doing her thing. And and because, I mean, even as you were growing up, probably most scientists look like this, right? Absolutely. Even now. And they're your role models. And we often say, one of the things people often say, you, you can't be what you can't see. Well, I think yes, Mary, but I reckon Mary Anning smashes that. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. she was a first. Yeah. And you need those first people mm-hmm. to come along because pave the way to to pave the way and yeah. to to help um, inspire you and to give mm. you and other other uh, young girls and, and women that example of like you know she she didn't give up and she mm. had all these barriers she was struck by lightning as a kid she was all of that stuff which is <laughs> like yeah 
um, you know, her father died when she was 11 or 12. She, there were poverty, and so she had mm. to sell seashells on the seashore. Mm. So um, now that you've, you've had a chance to, to learn about paleontology and study it and have learned a bit more about her, what, mm. what do you, where do you see her? What, uh, uh, what's her legacy, do you think? I guess, um, like, I would, well, to me personally, yeah, I Yeah, and, and what's, yeah. What's, what, what do you see as her personal legacy? And there's no right or wrong answers yeah, to Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess how I see it, and it might be, it might be me projecting a little bit, probably. Yes, yeah, um, of course, we all, and we yeah, all do that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I guess, like, uh, defiant curiosity, you know? Yeah. Like, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> defiant curiosity. Which that is yeah. such a yes, and like um, I, I, know, I see a lot of myself in that as well because um, I have so many different interests. So like at the moment I do you know paleontology and a lot of environmental sciences and lots of activism and lots of feminism and all that sort of um, stuff and a lot of that um, I guess flies in the face of what's expected of me as a young female, um, as, um, uh, I guess, someone who, yeah, like, even within science, I think it's expected that women who are in sciences um, are traditionally a little bit more masculine, which yeah. uh, I very much am not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so... so, yeah, like, uh, a little, like, it mirrors a little bit of what I like about myself as well, um, how yeah, defiantly curious she was. Yeah, I just I don't care what you think. I want to learn about this thing, and I'm going to do it by myself, yeah, with or without is, you. Which 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 is is we're going to have to keep that. Okay. Mary Anning, defiant curiosity. <laughs> Look, um, on that note, um, mm -hmm. thank you so much. That's great. For the chat and yeah. being part of our Mary Anning week or fortnight or life. <laughs> Decade, century, however long it is. Um, thank you for telling us your That's story. Um, thank you for sharing your thoughts on Mary Anning. And um, happy birthday, Mary Anning. Yeah, happy birthday. Cheerio. <laughs> Bye.